My mother is now in the hospital for COVID-19, fighting for her breath. Something that so many of us take for granted every day when we wake up. I'm just gonna start out by saying that this virus isn't a joke. It's not something to laugh at. It's very real and it's not something that the world should be taking lightly. I'll admit that in March, February, before my school shut down, I was one of the skeptical ones. I mean, I, I didn't not believe there was a virus. I just thought, well, it can't be any worse than the flu. And when spring break came along, and I started noticing that this meme about toilet paper <laughs> was actually real, because I couldn't go to bashes down the street for toilet paper because it was gone. All of it, every single brand, every single roll. And as funny as that may sound, that was the moment that I realized something's wrong. For the entirety of this pandemic, my family and I have been doing everything in our power to be safe and to keep other people safe. I mean, we were bleaching all of our groceries when we got back from the store. We were wearing masks and gloves everywhere we went. We were sanitizing everything in the house, even between family members. We were doing everything right. We were doing everything we could. I was nervous about starting to film for Vanessa Into Madness because it was going to be scheduled for October. And we had just come out of a couple of months in Arizona where we were reaching the highest numbers in the world of cases per capita, of people dying. And I thought, oh my God, I'm gonna have to cancel this project that I've been working on for all of quarantine since March. I'm, I'm gonna have to cancel it. It's, it's not, it's not realistic, it's not safe. I was ready to give up. My first cast and crew meeting was scheduled for October 1st. And that was the night that I went to my grandparents' house, knowing that my grandmother was gonna die that night. So I rescheduled the meeting for the next day. And my grandmother made it through the night but the next morning she died. And that same day, oh, fuck. And that same day my grandmother had passed away, maybe six hours prior, I sat down with my cast and my crew, socially distanced in our rented office set. We sat down and I said, we're gonna do this film. We're gonna do it, and we're gonna do it safely. No one's gonna get sick. But I know that my grandmother and my mom would both not want me to give up. So I'm not going to. Despite this year shitting on me constantly since the beginning of March, I'm not giving up. This project means a lot to me and it's keeping me and my family going and we're going to get it done. That's the one good thing that's gonna come out of this year is this project. And so we did. We filmed. We got every single scene done we needed to. And it was great. The film looks amazing. Everyone did spectacular. It was beautiful. And we all did it safely. Nobody came out with COVID. Not a single person. We did everything right. I went through some really 
difficult decisions during October. Not even just for the project, but for people who were close to me. I had to make some very important self-reflective decisions that month. I had to step back and reevaluate the people in my life. Because if there's one thing that working on this project has taught me, it has taught me that people who really love you and care about you will support you through anything thick and thin. And you should never settle for less. And so I decided not to settle. And I made some very important decisions for my future that month. And to say that was heartbreaking and stressful is an understatement. But I survived. I made it. The film looked great. Everyone did amazing, as I said. And I was ready to move on to the next scheduled scenes in November. But um, I had scheduling conflicts. Some of my cast was falling through. Things kind of started falling apart. And I was like, that's okay, we can take this month off then. Let's just move it to December, early December, because there's only a few scenes left. It's the final stretch. We'll just do it in the first two weekends of December. And everyone was cool with that. So I took November off. I looked over my script probably a hundred more times to really make sure that before I got everyone together again, that these scenes were absolutely what I wanted. And I was ready. I was ready for December. I was excited. It was the ending of the series. We were filming the climax. I was so excited. I had it all in my head. I had the camera angles. I was ready to go out and buy a drone to get the shot. Like I'm talking, this shot is so groundbreaking in my mind. It, I was so excited to just have it in my hands to edit and look at and go, wow, this is what the series is for leading all up to this moment right here. I was ready for that. And then my dad starts developing this cough. And my dad, you know, he has a cough consistently throughout his whole life. He kind of like, <clears throat> like clears his throat or coughs in the morning because he has allergies like the rest of the family does. So we didn't think too much of it. So after Thanksgiving, we decided since we had hung out with a few close family members that we should probably get tested. Just, you know, to be extra safe. Every time we had been around people that weren't immediate family who lived under this roof, we always got tested. No matter what, no matter how we felt, because there is such thing as asymptomatic spread, we always got tested. And so this time was no exception. After Thanksgiving, we went and we got tested um, the next day, uh, I woke up, I got the text from the clinic that said, hey, your test was negative, you're good to go. My mom received her text, hey, your test was negative, you're good to go. My father, on the other hand, came back positive. And as of today, that was about two weeks ago. And we immediately start trying to segregate ourselves. We're all wearing masks whenever we're in the living room or a common area. We don't stay around in the living room together. We, like for me, I stay out in this spare bedroom, which I'm currently redesigning for Vanessa into Madness, but um, it's very girly in here right now. Uh, you guys can't see a lot of what's going on, but there is like a pink princess ruffly comforter set, and then there's all these plushies and pink shag rug and curtains and flowers and a bunny claw. It's, it's, it's a whole lot. Um, I had a lot of fun with that. But anyway, that's off topic. Um, I mostly stay out in this room. I only go inside whenever I need to, you know, use the bathroom or prepare myself some food, which I eat out here. So, but whenever I go inside, I immediately wash my hands before I touch anything. I have a mask on. We're all trying our very best to keep each other safe, even though we live in the same house and it's an airborne virus so you know that's not very easy to do so of course even despite our efforts my mom and i start showing symptoms my mom was first she started with you know like a headache she just kind of felt like weak um 
Her cough didn't come on until kind of late. It took a couple days, a few days, I think. Um, she was mostly having gastrointestinal issues. She was vomiting a lot. She couldn't keep any food down. So hers appeared a lot like a stomach flu. Um, but her symptoms were very severe very quickly. And um, it took me about a few days of her being into her symptoms until I finally woke up one day with a light cough and a really excruciating like pressure headache. So that's when I knew. I was like, I woke up with a fever and I'm coughing and I feel a little shaky. I'm like, this is probably it. <laughs> but it has never gotten worse than that for me. Everything's been very up in my sinuses and in my eyes, like my eyes are stinging. It just kind of feels like exaggerated allergies for me with a little bit of my asthma acting up, but it's nothing dangerous for me. I'm doing okay. My body is fending it off pretty well. And at this point, my dad is also doing okay. He's just got the cough and the bone aches as usual. Sometimes he's got a little bit of a headache, but other than that, he's upright, walking, talking, eating, functioning, and, and more. So um, my mom, on the other hand, every day would start getting worse. Um, she went from being able to talk and walk and breathe from, she went from that to slowly kind of being more bedridden. For the past recent days, her oxygen has been at a saturation point below 85, which for those of you who don't know, you want to be in the 90s because when you're in the 80s, you're risking cardiac arrest and brain damage. So she's been no higher than 85 on a good day for the past four or five days. So we were starting to get very worried. And um, she was finally able to start keeping food down once she, because um, my mom, she's stubborn. She likes to take care of herself as long as possible. She's also very like not into taking medications that she doesn't think she needs. Um, so she waited quite a while until she absolutely needed to, and then she finally contacted a doctor through a teleconference, and he wanted her to come into the ER right then, but she was like, no, <laughs> um, just prescribe me some meds that I need and I'll take care of myself at home. And so he did, he prescribed her some steroids and some antibiotics to help with the developing pneumonia, and um, she started taking those and they were not really doing much for her for the first 24 hours. Her oxygen wasn't going up at all. Um, she was having a lot of trouble sleeping, still having trouble keeping food down a little bit. Um, but then after a couple days on the meds, she was finally able to keep her first meal down and she's been taking in nutrients ever since, which is a good sign because it's helping to give her strength. Um, in fact, currently she has been eating fine um, her stomach doesn't seem to be an issue any longer, but now the virus has seemed to settle into her lungs. And obviously that's what Corona does. It's, you know, it causes lung infections and pneumonia. Um, so her lungs weren't getting any better and we had tried everything. We had tried the steroids, the antibiotics, we tried a rescue inhaler. Um, every four hours, we tried her, like, propping her up and having her sleep in different positions. We tried doing a nebulizer with albuterol, and um, none of it has really been enough to treat it to where she's comfortable and that she's, you know, in a healthier state that's, you know, not deadly. Because when your oxygen is 86 at its highest, that's really gonna put stress on your heart and my mom has a history of heart issues already so we couldn't risk it any longer and so today uh, my dad finally drove her to the hospital it was really hard because I couldn't go with to even go to the hospital because in the house, we're trying to stay separate from each other. And so, we, my mom couldn't even fathom me riding in the car with my dad and her because she was so scared that my symptoms would get worse if I caught their strain of this virus in case it was different somehow. So I couldn't even 
ride in the car with them. As of recording this, my dad hasn't gotten back yet. Um, I couldn't even go with them because they don't let anyone into the hospital who has a positive COVID test. And even though I haven't been tested since I've been showing symptoms, I'm 100% sure I have it because um, I've got all the textbook symptoms. I can't taste, I can't smell. I have off and on fevers, and chills at night, coughing. I basically had to hug her in the living room before she left. And now that's either going to be the last time I see her or she'll get better in the hospital and I won't be able to be there for her, but I can pray from home. If you had told me in March that I would be begging God for my mother's life in just a few months from then, I would not believe you. If you had told me that in March, that I would be begging my deceased grandmothers and any other family that's already up there with God to please not take my mother. I would not believe you. And what really hurts is that we've been fighting since the beginning of this pandemic to be safe. I haven't had a senior year because I've stayed home. I haven't touched a wooden floor and danced in months. I haven't had human contact with people my age for months. I mean, if you want to make the exception of Vanessa into madness, that's fine. We did film and I was around people I knew and loved, but that was under a professional setting. I'm talking, I haven't been able to be with people without, you know, just constantly worrying for months. I've sacrificed so much of my life and the things I could be doing in the world because I wanted to do the right thing. And we still got it. And the people who are out in the world that I'm watching be reckless and selfish and absolutely atrocious in terms of being sanitary and safe and thinking about other people. There are friends of mine who have been on this channel and I'm not naming names because I still love these people, but I see them out in the world on their social medias doing absolutely stupid things right now. Absolutely reckless things right now. And I'm praying for their safety because now that I've seen what this virus can do to somebody, I'm terrified for them. Because they're close to me. And I, it's, it's baffling to me how they can be so reckless in their actions. And thank God someone's watching over them because they've all been fine so far, but my God. Like, it just sucks to know that you can sacrifice literally so much and still end up losing. So yeah, no, this, this virus isn't a joke. It doesn't care who you are. It doesn't care what you've been through. It doesn't care about your age. It doesn't care about what you're going through in life right now. It doesn't care if you have depression. It doesn't care if you have anxiety. It doesn't care if you're... It, it doesn't care. If you're not careful, you will get it. Not to be an alarmist but this is coming from someone who has literally done everything in their power to be safe. With the exception of seeing very close people in a very safe CDC okay manner to keep our social and emotional health and mental well-being somewhat up to par.
Because I'll tell you, being stuck in the same house, never leaving, for six months straight, it's gonna get to you. It just pisses me off to see that my state... I live in Arizona, by the way. Um, for those of you who are new and do not know that, I am an American and I live in Arizona. A state that is going through <laughs> a lot right now. Um, we've been up and down and up and down and up and down. Um, right now we're going up. <laughs> we're climbing the charts again, um, which is fantastic. Um, I'm just frustrated. I really am, and I can't fucking wait for this vaccine to just be released. Because I don't know how much longer I can do this. Doing an update so that people know what's going on, guys. It's gonna be alright. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, my, my dad just came in. He got back from dropping my mom off. The point of this video was supposed to just be to let you know that Goat Mom is in the hospital and needs your thoughts and prayers and good healing vibes sent her way. But I figured that I'd also use this video as an opportunity to also express what I've been doing throughout this pandemic for the most part, as well as how it has been affecting my family for the past few months and some passionate opinions on people being dumb. It's not that hard to just think of others whenever you go out in the world. It's really not. It's even more frustrating than it was before now to watch the world and my state specifically, locally, people being so selfish now that I have a parent who is in the hospital. It just really pisses me off. So this is really a plead to the people, not only in the state of Arizona, but in the United States and all over the world, to do the right thing. Don't be selfish. Be responsible. And think about other people. My mother is now in the hospital for COVID-19, fighting for her breath something that so many of us take for granted every day when we wake up. So please pray for her. That's all I'm really asking. Is that if you're seeing this somehow, that you keep my mom in your thoughts. And I guess I'm also asking for the world to just be better. I know a vaccine is coming which is great news. And if I lose my mom right before the vaccine comes out, I'm going to be devastated. Because that's just so unfair. I've already lost so much this year. I know that this year I probably won't have a Christmas. Which sucks. Because it was already going to be hard without my grandmother, because she's such a big part of Christmas. But now because of this virus being in the family, and my mom being in the hospital for God knows how long, I don't think I'm going to have a Christmas. I'm looking at so many presents that I've wrapped for family members that I won't even get to celebrate with this year. Another disclaimer I want to put in this video that I think is important. I've had other content creators, not very many thank God, but I've had a few approach me in my DMs or on Discord who have expressed their concern to me about me sharing my negative emotions or my opinions on social media platforms like Twitter because they think it's unprofessional and unhelpful and could do harm to my reputation as an artist. Which, um... 
I respect the way that certain content creators think, which is views, followers, income, revenue, whatever. They do it for the numbers. But for the people who had the audacity to find my DMs just to tell me that expressing my opinions and emotions publicly is inappropriate or unprofessional or could damage me, really it's none of your goddamn business. And I am a human being and I'm going to express my opinions and my emotions however the hell I want to. And if I lose followers or get cancelled or lose money, then so be it. I'm always going to stand up for what I believe in. Whether that's just me feeling sad or if I'm going through some shit. I don't think there should be any stigma behind expressing yourself. Basically, I just want to say that I do what I do because I want to spread love and I want to show the world my art and my talent and my passion. I don't do it for the numbers, I don't do it for the followers, I don't do it to get a paycheck. I mean, yeah, music is my source of income, but that's not the point. My point isn't to get famous off of, you know, the number of subscribers subscribers I have, or the number of streamers I have listening to my music every year on Spotify. Like, I don't give a damn. And if those numbers go down because I release a video talking about how human I am, then that just really speaks volumes about humanity and the internet. So, I'm not sorry for expressing my emotions, and I don't feel bad about it. And I never will. As far as the film series goes, it's really up in the air right now. I don't know when I will continue the filming. I don't know when it's going to come out next year. I honestly, I'm just as clueless as you guys are, so... That doesn't mean the hype for the project has to die. I'm not giving up on that project. I've literally turned my bedroom into a nasty, sparkly, pink-infested garbage can. The rainbow blanket's nice. <laughs> uh, the, the bunny clock is kind of cute, too. I like the clock. I, I really like the clock. Um, <laughs> I have destroyed my bedroom and turned it into a five-year-old bedroom for this character, and I'm not going to let that go to waste, so... <laughs> I'm not giving up on this project. It's still going to happen. Um, I just don't know when. I may not even be able to continue filming until after the vaccine is released. So, and that could be a while from now. I'm just going to be honest with you guys. I don't want, I want to be transparent. I don't want to be like Security Breach where I give you a trailer and then radio silence for five months. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> um, no offense to the people who are working on Security Breach, I didn't mean that as a jab. I, I respect the creators, I respect Steel Wool and Illumix and Scott, they're all doing so amazing and I'm excited and still hyped for when the game does come out. I'm just saying that I am not going to do radio silence because I know that I personally hate radio silence so I don't want to give you guys, you know, nothing. <laughs> Um, I will keep you guys frequently updated on my thoughts about the future of this project and how I'm going to progress. Um, but right now, the project is not on my mind. My mom is on my mind. And I'm just praying that she walks out of the hospital and comes home feeling better. Thank you for watching this if you did. I just want people to be thinking about her and to be praying for her. Be a responsible and kind and thoughtful human being and wear a goddamn mask. I love you guys and I hope that you all are doing well and staying healthy and safe during this hard time. And always remember to stay bright because you're a star. And I will see you all next time.